to see only a small red line Pleistocene and Holocene very tiny very tiny compared to all of the life on earth and before it back 4,500 million years ago. We're going to be traveling on a boat called a doggo. We'll have paper sounds, history, some pen and ink, as we draw a timeline of the people in Britain all the way to the time of the first Greek city-states. So I will put in some points from human history in the Mediterranean and Western Asia to get our bearings from time to time on these hundreds of thousands of years that we will be looking at human habitation in the teeming environment that was once Northern Europe. So, get comfortable and enjoy the sounds. The Doggo Bank is a large, shallow area, about 60 miles off the east coast of England. A rich fishing bank named similar to a catch. They are documented from the 14th century and began as single-masted vessels by the 17th. 
associated with this specific design rather than the generic Dutch trawlers of the North Sea. These dockers were low, sturdy vessels capable of fishing in rough conditions of the North Sea. They were gaff-rigged on the main mast and carried a luck sail on the mizzen with two jibs on a long bowsprit. These boats were generally short, wide, beamed, and small, and were used for trawling and line fishing on the Dogger Bank. Doggers were considerably smaller vessels in comparison to the catch displacing around. of salt and half a ton each of food and firewood for the crew, therefore capable of carrying six tons of fish. These would have been around 50 feet long with a maximum beam of 15 feet or they had a draft of about five feet and a rudder rather than a steering oar, as well as very high sides. The existence of a settlement on the submerged Dogger Bank, or what is now called Doggerland, before submerging, can be found in H. G. Wells' story of the Stone Age, that is set on this prehistoric landmass, resting now beneath the waves of the North Sea.
during the last glacial maximum, which ended about 18,000 years ago, the North Sea and much of the British Isles were covered with glacial ice, and the sea level was about 120 meters lower. The climate later became warmer, and during the late glacial maximum, around 12,000 BC, Great Britain, as well as much of the North Sea and English Channel, was an expanse of low-lying tundra. main ice age, the Seine, the Thames, the Moise, the Scheldt, and the Rhine joined and flowed west along the English Channel as a wide, slow river before reaching the Atlantic Ocean in the west. Mud 
grassy plains of Doggerland were an ideal grazing ground for large herds of animals, such as reindeer, who in turn were prey for the cave lions, saber-toothed cats, cave hyenas, and wolves. A paleogeographical team from Birmingham found that one large river system drained the southeastern part of the Doggerbank Hill area into the east end of the outer Silver Pit Lake. Over time, this area became flooded by the rising sea levels after the last glacial period, around 6500 to 6200 BC. An isostatic adjustment caused the land to tilt as the weight of the glacier melted away. Doggerland eventually became submerged, leaving only Doggerbank, a possible moraine, which is an accumulation of glacial debris. The land that remained after flooding was a possible staging post for the first Neolithic farmers to settle in Britain thousands of years later. A recent theory among archaeologists suggests that much of the remaining coast and low-lying islands were flooded around 6225 to 6170 BC by a mega tsunami caused by the Storica landslide. This landslide was along the northern Norwegian coast and resulted from an estimated 180 mile length of coast shelf collapsing into the Norwegian sea and causing a large tsunami across the North Atlantic. Analysis of the seabed and its sediments in the North Sea suggests that some parts of Doggerland survived the waves as a scattered archipelago of islands. In some places, these catastrophic tsunamis had swept up to 25 miles inland along valleys and low-lying areas, but dense woodlands and hills may have protected other parts of the region. Whilst most of Doggerland was inundated, archipelago survived for millennia until it, too, was swallowed by the rising sea after 5000 B.C. and it did 
birds of mammoth, rhinoceros, and hunting artifacts that have all been dredged up from the sea floor.
concentration of resources in darker land indicates they were more settled than typical hunter-gatherer societies. However, due to rising seas and the Storica tsunami, major population displacement occurred, changing the topography slowly but significantly. Although historians believed the tsunami was the final nail in the coffin for Doggerland, a recent study in 2020 by British and Estonian scientists has shown that a small part of Doggerland and its inhabitants did survive. These remaining people were possibly the first in Britain to transition from the Mesolithic hunter-gatherer lifestyle to Neolithic farming practices. Ancient tree stumps, flint used by humans, and fossilized remains of a mammoth helped form a picture of how the landscape may have looked. Findings suggest a land of hills and valleys, large swamps and lakes with major rivers dissecting a convoluted coastline. As the sea rose, the hills would have become an isolated archipelago of low islands. By examining the fossil record, such as pollen grains, microfauna, and macrofauna, researchers can tell what kind of vegetation grew in Doggerland and what animals roamed there. Some teams are currently investigating more evidence of human behavior, including possible human burial sites, standing stones, and a mass mammoth grave. More recently, man-made beaches constructed from material dredged from the sea as part of efforts to protect the modern coastline from the impact of climate change have provided a trove of once inaccessible treasures from a world inhabited for a million years by modern humans, Neanderthals, and even older hominids known as Homo antecessor. Have you enjoyed our trip into the past, my friend, and all of the soft sounds as we raised the sea level in the North Sea and learned about geological history in what was once the most beautiful and lush part of Europe. Sleep well, my